Ladies and gentlemen and everybody in between, I am some guy. And thank you very much for choosing to watch Overanalyzed Adventures. I'm here today to finish off the overanalysis of the Blackwell Unbound. So let's go ahead and pick up where we left off. We're chasing after a crazy old lady in the dead of night. Yeah, let's see how that goes. She's pretty spry for an old lady. Spry my foot. You couldn't outrun a one-legged turtle with those lungs. Don't start with me, okay? So naturally, Lauren's reaction is to go outside and Jane smoke some more. So yeah, we have to switch over to Joey and talk her down from a ledge. Well, more like talk her down from her smoker's balcony. Nobody that old should move that fast. Lauren, ever since we started playing this game, you have literally not had one second without a cigarette in your hand. I'm pretty sure your lungs are like shriveled up prunes at this point. So it does not surprise me for one second that an old lady could outrun you. But at any rate, Joey and Lauren talk about how the old lady can see Joey, which means probably she has some attachment to the spiritual world. But oh well, Lauren's done smoking now, so we can go on to the next case. Right after she lights up another cigarette after already smoking on her balcony. Because you know, she's got a problem, folks. Hmm. Looks like another bus, Joey. Yeah, maybe. Or maybe not. Wait, you hear that? I think so. Let's get closer. Looks like our evening might not be a total wash after all. All right, we got a smooth sax ghost player who's so in the zone, he's not going to be really responsive at all to anything we say or try to do to him. Like, say, grab his saxophone. I need to ask you a few questions first. Not now, man. Can't you see I'm in the middle of something? Get off the stage! Stage? Ow! That's, That's how we how treat we your kind at Johnny Ivory's. Oh, I hope you still have short-term memory or you transcribe everything you hear in this game, because we need to look up Johnny Ivory's now in the old yellow pages, and then pay it a visit. Hey, mister. Yes? Got a minute? For a pretty thing like you, I got several. I hope he doesn't mind messing around with a lady that smells like an ashtray. But anyway, we chit-chat with this guy for a while, and he's not going to be particularly forthcoming with information, although he does put the moves on a little bit with Lauren. These fingers can go all night long. Can they now? Oh, jeez, make him stop. Nah, I don't want to be too explicit here, but you gotta wonder, has Lauren ever taken a gentleman home and, well, Joey's just sitting out there awkwardly? Well, God, she sleeps on the couch, so, oh dear Joey, you've seen things, haven't you? And speaking of seeing things, there's only one thing we need to see in this entire room, at least for right now, and that's this photo on the wall that conveniently displays a sax player. Now, as you can imagine, a city with millions of people and probably thousands, if not tens of thousands of sax players, this could be anyone. But hey, by pure coincidence, a photograph of our ghost is right behind this piano player in this area. So let's go check out Jambalaya Records, which is also open in the dead of night because, well, hey, atmosphere's gotta be created, folks. Good evening to you. I'm Dwayne. Lauren Blackwell. I was hoping you could help me. I'll do my best. What can I do for you? Well, actually, as of right now, this guy is not going to be able to do a whole lot for us, except identify the band that the sax player played in. In order to do this, we have to take a photograph of the photograph and show it to him. And that's the only time it's necessary to take a photograph in this entire game. The rest are just for pure fun. Do you know this band? Oh, yeah. I remember those guys. The C Sharps. Wait a minute. That very provocative piano player was named C. Huh. I wonder if he was a band leader for a band with the name of the C-Sharps. It couldn't just be a coincidence. That was the band's name? Yeah, I used to manage them. You used to manage them, but not anymore? Nah. Been about eight, ten years. Time flies, you know? So let's go back and talk to C, because we need to figure out who the sax player is. And no, the record label owner doesn't know, because as he puts it... Ah, uh, well, it was a long time ago. I'm not much on individual names. I just remembered the band. Oh, well, it can't ever be that easy now, can it? Are you sure you don't know anything about the C-Sharps? There's a picture of them right behind you. Lots of pictures appear on that wall. I just work here. I don't know its entire history. Now, you mind? I got a gig to finish. Now you could be thinking, hey, just take a picture of C and then show it to the record label owner. Then he can identify him as a band leader of the C-Sharps. And actually, 
No, you can't do that. What you have to do instead is a bit more straightforward. You just look at the sheet music and realize the dude wrote his name on it. It's Cecil Sharp. So with that information in our brain, we go talk to the record label owner who's like, yeah, Cecil Sharp totally was the band leader of the C Sharps. So now we can grill C about the band that he denied being in, despite the fact he was in it. So obviously there's some dark, deep-seated secrets involving this band that we need to uncover so the ghosts can finally rest. What can you tell me about your old band, the C-Sharps? C-Sharps? Can't help you there. Never heard of them. Now, I know that's a lie. I spoke to your old manager. He confirmed who you are. You spoke to Dwayne? Yes, I did. That... Fine! You got me. Yes, I used to run a band called the C-Sharps. It was a rotten time in my life, and I'd just as soon forget it. Yeah, see, we're not gonna let you go that easily. You're gonna have to give us all the dirty details. For starters, what was the name of that sax player? You just don't quit, do you? You want to know so badly? His name is Isaac Brown. Isaac Brown? Yes. You happy now? Ecstatic. Great. What can you tell me about Isaac Brown? Him? He's a bum, a drunk, a nobody, a lowlife. He's also dead. And how did he die? Someone strangled him to death with his bare hands. Wait a minute, that's how Mavis died. Oh my god, I wonder if there's a connection. Last time someone asked about Isaac, it was some reporter from The New Yorker. He came along, asked his questions, then BAM! Isaac's dead. Well, 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 how intriguing. Perhaps we should pay the guy we know at the New Yorker a visit. That Mitchell guy. And yes, he was a real live man who wrote for the New Yorker about real life people and apparently had writer's block for 30 years because, well, he had writer's block for 30 years and he still got paid by the New Yorker. So, hey, New Yorker, if you're looking for anyone to fill that void that this Mitchell guy left, I'm willing to do it. I cannot write for 30 years. I'd like to talk about Isaac Brown. Ah, Isaac. You knew Isaac? Sort of, yes. I'm looking into his death. Really? That was almost five years ago. Why the sudden interest? Come on, let's go grill this kind old man. So what was Isaac's story? I know he played in a band called the C-Sharps. Then something obviously went wrong. What was it? Listen, have you tried asking Mr. Sharp? Yes. He's not talking. I don't blame him. He's probably feeling guilty. Guilty? Why? He has his reasons. Could you, uh, I don't know, tell me what those reasons are? I can't do that. Of course he can't. Things are never that easy, are they? And it's not like we can put a gun to this guy's head, but instead a slip of the tongue's gonna help us. I won't say any more about Isaac, or his sister. Sister? Sister? Uh, please, I'm not gonna say any more. So yeah, now we got a fresh new lead, and also, this Mitchell guy seems pretty shady. So far he's written about two people that have ended up strangled, likely by that old lady, who we ran into and could have chased down because we smoked too damn much. Hmm. There's something really fishy going on here, and there's some telltale signs that this dude's not even doing his job, but we already know that because we read his Wikipedia page. But still, that's mighty suspicious. Shady Southern journalist aside, let's go back to Cecil and talk about Isaac's sister. I need to speak to you about Isaac's sister. You? That's it! You've crossed the line, sister. It was fun for a while, but now it's time for you to leave. Ooh, now you've done it. And now we got a little dialogue puzzle where we have to carefully navigate our choices in order to get this guy to spill the beans. And yeah, it's going to take some trial and error because if you're like me, you lack empathy or you just don't know what Dave Gilbert wants out of you. I just... Shut it! Just leave, why don't you? Fine, I'm going. Yeah, it's not going so well for Lauren. But good thing we got Joey on her side and he can offer us some insight into this poor broken man. I know that expression. Only time a man gets a look like that is when he's hung up over a woman. Go easy on him, huh? Yeah, I could have never figured that out on my own, Joey. Thank you very much for your valued input. But because we had Joey look at the guy, we now have a new dialogue option that at last is going to make us be able to talk to this guy. Hello, Cecil. You loved her, didn't you? Of course I loved her. She was our heart and soul. I would have... Damn you, woman. Damn you. I just want to play this piano and forget she ever existed. Why don't you just leave me alone? So what happened, C? It's very important that you tell me. All right. All right. I don't know who you are or why you're so interested, but you're never going to leave me alone, are you? No, I won't. 
You were in a band together, right? Yeah, we had a band. Smart girl. Then she died. Then he died. End of story. No, I'm afraid we're going to need a few more details than that. What happened to Sarah? She got sick. Pneumonia or something. Started coughing one day and wouldn't stop. She got better after a while, but something happened to her voice. Doctor said she would never sing again. After that, the spark just went out. She hung on for a few months, but she just lost the will to live. Oh, damn, that's just a tragedy. Anything else you can tell me about Sarah? I love that woman. Even when she lost her voice... I would have given up everything for her. Heck, I would have even let her brother live with us. I should have told her. Would've, could've, should've, couldn't do whatever. I forgot how this saying goes. But man, this is just a tragedy right here. A man lost the love of his life. Her brother became a drunk on the streets and was strangled to death one night. Now, despite all this tragedy, we still do not have the precious bit of information that we need to free the ghost. No, we're going to have to pry a little bit more. You know, all this talk reminds me of something. Sarah and Isaac would always play this song. Really? Yeah, a duet. At the end of every show. She'd sing and he'd play the saxophone? No, she'd actually play the piano, if you can believe it. She wasn't great, but she loved playing with Isaac. And Isaac loved that silly song. They never let me join them, but that was okay. It was kind of sweet, in a way. Oh, well. Huh, so they used to play a silly little song to close out every set, and the ghost thinks he's playing on stage. <gasps> we need to record this song they used to play to close out every show and then play it for the ghost. And that's exactly what we're gonna do, folks. It really is a great thing we had this tape recorder lying around our house. Otherwise, we would have never been able to free this ghost. Unless, well, we could have got Lauren to lug the piano and Cecil over to the bridge, but yeah, I don't think that would have happened. Wow, how polite the ghost to stop playing music so he can listen to this track we're playing for him. I, sis, is that you, sis? I've been waiting for so long. No, Isaac, I'm not your sister. She couldn't come. No, no, she couldn't, could she? My sister's dead, isn't she? Yeah. Now I'm dead, too. Yeah. I knew that. Deep down, I knew that. I just couldn't let go. I'm sorry. Is that why you two are here? To help me let go? That's what we do best. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do. Don't worry. Just leave everything to us. Just so sad, so sad, all so sad. Life is full of tragedy. Well, let's send this ghost into the light. Hi, Isaac. Hey, this is it, huh? Yep, eternity, the white light, the passage into the next world. Oh my god, Brain, can you please turn down the music? I cannot hear what they're saying. Some of this information may be important. Crazy old lady, she killed me. Old lady? Says she wanted to help me. Then she me. Why'd she want to go and do a thing like that? Yes, indeed, welcome to AGS Sound Mixing. Sometimes things get a bit loud. But anyway, the ghost informs us that yes, an old lady strangled him to death. And yes, we're really going to have to follow up on that lead. You all right? Yeah, fine. I'm exhausted. Call it a night? Sounds good to me. You? Like clockwork. Oh, how convenient. There's that lead we need to follow. And yeah, we're going to try to chase after her again. And yes, you can imagine what's going to happen. We've got some questions for you, lady. Why did you kill Isaac and Mavis? I didn't kill them. I'm like you. You're nothing like us. We don't kill. 
I help spirits into the next world, like you. You mean, you're a medium? Yes. But you can't be. I am like you. Wait, no. This doesn't make any sense. Why are you killing people? I save people. I don't hurt them. Get back here, stupid old hag. Let's get after her. God damn it. Your nose okay? That lamppost should not have been there. So for the, what, fourth time now, Lauren's gonna go out to her balcony and smoke, and then we're gonna have to be Joey, and then we're gonna have to talk about her, and yeah, we're gonna talk about the crazy old lady and try to figure out what the hell is going on. She's a medium like me. It makes no sense. It does make sense, actually. She's not an animal or another ghost. The only way she could see me is if she was a medium like you. Well, yeah, it makes sense. I mean, there's billions of people on planet Earth, so there has to be more than one median to deal with all the ghosts. Is she my future? What do you mean? That woman, the Countess, or whatever she's called. Is that what happens to mediums when they get old? I... I don't know, darling. I really don't. But I won't let that happen to you. You have my word on that. Oh, Joey, you're just so damn sweet, but hey, wait a minute. We already know what happens to Lauren. Oh, Joey, you couldn't save her! If she's a medium, where is her spirit guide? You know, I wondered that myself. I'm your connection to the spirit world. The Countess, or whoever she is, doesn't have that. Or at least none that we can see. Is it possible to be a medium without a guide? I don't think so, sweetheart. That's one thing I'm sure of. Medium and guide. That's how it works. Well, that's just intriguing now, isn't it? But because the Countess does not have a guide, there's obviously some other connection that's causing her to strangle all these people. Probably a living connection. Like, oh, I don't know, maybe someone who reported on all these people? A medium needs a guide. Hers is gone. Somehow Mitchell fills in the gap. Our Countess is being told through Mitchell's writing to help certain spirits into the next world. It's not her fault they're still alive. You mean... I think you get the picture. Oh god, that's sick. It makes sense, though. How is this possible? There's only one way to find out. It's time we paid our friend Mitchell one more visit. And that's exactly what we're going to do. It's time for the climax of the game, folks. Yes? Miss Blackwell. Hello again, Mr. Mitchell. I was just about to head home. Oh, I'll just be a second. Well, if... You insist. Do have a seat. Thanks, but I'd rather stand. Go on, let him have it. Mind if I smoke? Well, actually... Thanks. Whoa, I think Lauren has magical smoking power. She just spawned that cigarette into her hand. But oh yeah, dramatic climax. Yeah, we really need to grill this guy. Mr. Mitchell, two people are dead. So I gathered. You wrote about both of them. Yes, I did. You don't find anything suspicious about that. I've written about hundreds of people over 30 years. The fact that two of them happen to be dead does not surprise me. Yeah, I ain't buying that guy. You know more than you're letting on. Let's get to the heart of the damn matter. You aren't a very good liar. And you are poking your nose into things you don't understand. You'd be surprised at what I understand, Mr. Mitchell. Try me. Oh yeah, this man's about to sing like a canary. Do canaries sing? I don't know, but what I do know is about to tell us everything that happened. I write about people and they die. Can you understand that, can you? My whole life I've been driven to write about people. Now I kill them instead. Well that more or less succinctly sums up what's going on right now. You see, any time this Mitchell guy writes about someone, the Countess, through some sort of psychic powers, hears about it, and she in turn thinks that these people need to be freed by being murdered. But that does beg the question now. What the hell are we going to do to stop it from happening again? You want to write so bad? Write about me. Dust off that typewriter and get to work. Knock yourself out. Listen, I spoke out of turn. I didn't honestly mean. Hell with that. Just do it. Hey, this is dangerous. I know what I'm doing. I can't do it. Like hell you can't. You've been writing for how long? 30 years? More? I know you can do it. I want to meet this thing head on. It's the only way. Do it. You don't know what you're asking. What's the worst that could happen? You could die. Oh. Is that all? Well, you're also probably going to burn a hole in his carpet. I mean, Lord, you're just dropping cigarettes. Every oh, I'm sorry, Germanic Climax. Right. I was born in Troy, upstate New York. My mother's name was Patricia. My father... You getting this stuff down?
Well, I hope you're happy. I'm never happy. And I hope you have a gun, because that crazy lady sure as hell's gonna be coming for you. But anyway, for the fifth time now, Lauren goes out on the balcony and smokes, and oh yeah, the Countess does indeed show up. I... I know you. Yes, you know me. Come in. I'm watching you. So... What's your story? I want to help you. Help me, huh? You're in pain? Lost? I can help. And as you can expect, the Countess really isn't going to be super forthcoming with any information because, well, she crazy. Do you have a guide? A spirit guide? I still feel her. She is gone, but not completely gone. What do you mean? Kid, her mind is snapped. She's not going to make any sense. Yes, she snapped my mind. She went away and my world expanded. I see everything. Everything! It hurts! Alright, just to make everything 100% clear so we can understand this crazy lady's motivations and actions. Her spirit guide left her. It caused her to go crazy. She developed crazy psychic links to the world and started hearing whatever Mitchell was typing and used that to be her new guide. And instead of saving people, she killed them because she got crazy. Alright, that's all we really need to know. But the question still remains, what the hell are we going to do about it? You need to be free. Hey. Hey. Let her go, you old witch. Well, all right, it looks like the crazy lady's taking the initiative. But good thing for us, we have a crippling addiction to cigarettes. <laughs> well, that's one very rare case where smoking saves a life rather than kill it. But oh no, Lauren is passed out now, and Joey's non-corporeal. So what the hell is he going to do to stop this crazy lady? Oh, I don't know, maybe lure her over to the balcony? You want to free a spirit? Well, I'm the real McCoy. You? Yeah, that's right. Come and save me. Why won't you let me help you? Uh, J Joey? Come on, Lauren. You conveniently woken up right when we have the crazy lady exactly where we want her. I'm sorry. <coughs> I can't look. Is she? Yeah. There's no... No ghost. She's gone. Gone. I killed her. Yeah, and it's gonna kinda of be awkward to explain that to the police. If they even bother to come. It's the 70s in New York. That place was kinda of dicey back then, so maybe we don't have to worry. It was either her or you, darling. You made the right choice. Did I? What if- what if that's me one day, huh? What if I'm old and confused and alone? You won't be alone. I'll make sure of that. You say that now. But look at her! Her guide was gone. I can't speak for the future, kid. Maybe someday we'll meet someone like her, and then maybe we'll find out more. But right here, right now, I'm here, and I'm staying put. That's something, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah, it's something. Oh, we're at the end of the game, folks. Quite the ride, quite the ride. But first, Lauren needs to call up her brother, and you know, just talk. But she did kill a lady tonight. She may need to just, you know, talk to someone about it. Hi. Jack? Lauren. Sis, is that you? Yeah, Jack. It's me. Where have you been? It's not important. I miss you. Tell me about your life, Jack. How's Maria? When's the wedding? This is a really bad idea. Ah, fade to black and start rolling the credits, folks. That does it, folks. We are 100% done with the Blackwell Unbound. Now, if you want my two cents, here they are. The Blackwell Unbound is a really great game. From a design standpoint, puzzle standpoint, and writing standpoint, there's really not a whole lot to complain about. And when you compare it to the Blackwell Legacy, it's pretty obvious that the Blackwell Unbound is the superior game. Not that that was a bad game, but I really think the Blackwell Unbound serves as a better first game to the Blackwell series than the Blackwell Legacy. It just has so much more atmosphere, and its story is so Noresque and depressing. I mean, this game's really about human misery across the board. Even our protagonist is pretty melancholy and dead inside. It's just a lot more real, if that makes any sense. It really does feel like you're doing a proper investigation in this game, and it really does feel like these people did indeed have really bad, pathetic lives. And you can 
almost understand why the Countess killed them. Not to justify her actions, but it all makes sense. It's just pretty clear that Dave Gilbert's pretty good at writing Noor. I wonder how many times he's watched the Maltese Falcon. But yeah, folks, that does it. I've been some guy. And hopefully I'll see you next time when I overanalyze the Blackwell Convergence. Because yeah, folks, that's happening. Alright, bye-bye.